got it. So many faces, definitely more than expected. So oh, it's like 1816. So shall I start it or should yeah. we wait so for someone else? So without any further ado, hi there. My name is Vladimir and I'm going to be a host for the last session of today which should be a demo number two, benchmarking of opportunistic networks by Jens, Tenuka, Asanga, and Anna. Jens, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot. So I'm Jens from the University of Bremen. Anna, Asanga, I see here. So if there are any questions, you can also ask them. Um, thank you for having me here. I've presented a couple of slides. Um, and then I will show the some ideas of the uh, oops on the bench uh, system we are here currently development developing at the University of Bremen. Let's see if I can share my screen. You should see something right now. Yes, and I can confirm it. Perfect. First time that it's working on the first try. So. We are, um, have our system that is called uh, Oops on the Bench. So what are we doing? Um, we have the pr opportunistic protocol simulator. This is a great work done by Asanga. And uh, the idea is to create a framework for um, developing and uh, testing opportunistic networks. So the Oops on the Bench aims on making everything uh, easier to set up make it repeatable and comparable to uh, between the different uh, protocols uh, we are testing in the opportunistic protocol simulator. So um, what is our objective for an ideal protocol simulation? First of all, we would like to compare the protocols, uh, between, compare between different protocols. It means we develop our own protocols, for example, um, our example is uh, Kichi, and we would like to compare it to Epidemic. But how to do that? For this, we need standardized benchmarks. It means we keep um, the, um, the um, system or the simulation quite similar, so we can easily compare it. For that, we also do not only need uh, the same um, models, we also need the same model parameter. Also important is that we have a documented software version and we would like to have easy comparison of the results. And especially for newcomers in this area, it's interesting to um, have an easy simulation setup. So this is basically where our Oops on the Bench uh, system starts. The idea is that we have a web interface and you can start and uh, run your simulations from this web interface. Um, here you can basically set up everything. We have uh, two um, we have uh, two um, user interfaces. One is for the new, normal users, which is a little bit restricted, and we have one user interface which is a little bit more advanced uh, for um, for the professional or power users. Um, so the idea is that you can set up everything in the web interface. Afterwards, it's uh, your simulation. Basically, the Omni PP is enqueued to our simulation service and uh, run uh, in a docketized uh, way. That means uh, on one on the, of the servers, uh, the user gets informed, uh, informed if the simulation is running, if there are some problems. And once the simulation is done, uh, the results are uploaded in our case to a Dropbox, and the user can just download this, uh, the results and compare it to other. Uh, simulations uh, that you have run before. This is uh, the main idea. Are there questions to now? Otherwise, I will continue and uh, go to the web interface and uh, start the, and show what we are currently doing. That was my uh, question, whether you can show examples of these two interfaces. Yes, of course. Let's move it a little bit here. Now you should see the web browser. This is now, let's take this one here, kind of the bleeding edge where the student is currently uh, working on. Um, 
so we can start the simulations. One is we can directly upload uh, the Jens, yeah. Jens, make it bigger, much bigger. Yes, <laughs> yes sorry. This way? It's tiny. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay. okay. <laughs> of course. Wait, otherwise, let me unshare and try different, then it will get, because otherwise I will get problems with the next screen, I think. Uh, da, 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 da. Zoom. So here we go again. Is it okay? Readable? Anna? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Um, so what we have here, we can start a new simulation. Uh, in this version, we have three options. One is uploading directly uploading an omnipp.ini. Um, one is a generator where we can arbitrary uh, create arbitrary um, simulations from a generator we we're currently working on. And this is uh, our newest feature where we can select our benchmarks and uh, start the simulation from the benchmark. Um, I would try it out with the benchmark. So it asks. Um, what uh, simulation we would like to start. Let's call it summit um, 2021-0909. And we would like to take the roller skate scenario. Um, now it's asking which forwarding layer we would like to use. I take our Kichi forwarding layer. Then we have some parameters which can be changed. We have the random number seats. Uh, this you should know from the standard on the pp.in files, aging intervals, cache size, and so on. So we uh, defined several parameters which can be changed by the users. All the others are kept to uh, standard values. In the next step, we have the notification information. It means here I would like to get the uh, notification or the simulation state changes to my uh, email address. We have the precision and the data is uploaded to Dropbox. Here we only have Dropbox, uh, paid Dropbox account, but others are also possible. Afterwards, I just click next. Then the omnipp.ini is started and I get some information about the simulation. It means this is a test user who started the simulation. Currently it's queued. Simulation is not termina uh, terminated. Where is the data uploaded? And this here is uh, generated on the PP file where you see, okay, benchmark roller scenario, you will find the parameters in there. And after a while, the simulation will be started. Um, now it's uh, similar to the tutorial on the on the PP.ini file, the worker is running in the background, we have the Redis queue. And uh, after the, um, there is a slot free in the queue, the simulation will start. Um, we can, let me just create the simulation data, um, go to the queue status. You see we have currently two jobs running from other uh, simulations and two queued uh, jobs. It looks like this. You see this is the one we just uh, added, the submit 2021-0909. Um, here's another uh, already queued one. Here's a quite a long simulation, uh, which is a submit test simulation with a taxi scenario. And here's some uh, finished and also failed simulations in the overview. If you now have a finished simulation, this is basically the overview. We see simulation is completely finished, um, completed. We see the maximum RAM usage, the, the result passing uh, RAM usage, uh, the number of events. Um, and we can now download the results. This redirects us to the Dropbox um, folder. And here, basically, everything uh, we need to compare the simulation or to see what happened in the simulation is shown. Um, we have, again, on the pp.nu, if you would like to rerun the simulation, uh, you have uh, the CSV files uh, showing the corresponding uh, numbers of the simulation. If you have details question in here, I think Asanga is much deeper into the topic than I am. Um, you see, for example, the data average job count uh, over the uh, simulation time and all these results. 
uh, if you go more uh, or if you prefer graphical representations, uh, you also have uh, graphs for uh, the for the uh, for the CSV files I've just just shown. It means you see what's going on here. Of, um, we're planning to make it directly comparable uh, later on, so you can directly see what's going on in your simulation and which one performs better. Which is also here is uh, are the statistics uh, regarding the simulation statistics. It means um, if I go here. Uh, when did it start? How long did it take? What is the number of events again? Uh, what is the disk usage and so on? This uh, is regarding the um, performance of the simulation and uh, so on. This is the current status of it's, uh, how it's working. Um, the second option, which I can show here right now, is uh, start the simulation from the Omni PP. Uh, any this is quite boring because uh, you just enter uh, the simulation uh, title and uh, select uh, omnipp.ini from uh, your hard disk. Go to next, you have the same settings as before. Where should the notification go through? through. Here you can select which scenario from the omnipp.ini should be run here with the general and the uh, roller skate scenario. Where should it start? And if you click to the next the simulation, will it again start? This is um, the um, basic idea of the, the system we're currently working on. Are there any questions till now? And uh, you also spoke about the power user interface or? Exactly. The, the idea is um, for the, this is now with the administrative uh, interface. Um, for the normal users, uh, we um, planned or we are giving the access uh, using this generator we show here, where you are quite restricted and what you are allowed to do. That means we have pre-configured on the pp.ini where you can only change certain parameters. Um, for uh, here, you are restricted in the simulation runtime number of events. We can configure the simulation in a way it will not blast up our servers. The, for the power users, uh, we have this Omnip PP upload function, where in theory you can configure your Omnip PP uh, .ini in a way that it will basically blast our uh, our uh, servers. For this reason, we call this power user interface uh, because not everyone should have the power to crash our the power servers. And uh, I also have a question. Uh, is it uh, possible or, or is it planned to make uh, changes to the model code possible? Like adding some C++ class or is this sort of scope? Um, this is uh, kind of uh, critical regarding the, the, uh, the um, security, what kind of code is added because it, one is uh, executed on our server. We thought about it, uh, creating a branch and that after reviewing the model code, these are also added to the system. But um, due to security reasons, uh, we are not planning to do this automatically. But, uh, or we have to think about extended security features of the Docker containers and the workers. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to bring up, that uh, all of this runs in containers anyway, and it should be possible to configure them in a way that they are. Yeah, the, there's a question is the level of uh, security because the containers are not fully virtualized uh, virtual machines. And um, this is always a trade off between the security and the usability that we are currently discussing. discussing. I mean, uh, I'm sure you know this uh, website, uh, Compiler Explorer, that uh, has had uh, execution capability for some time now, and they have also did it some way, so it should be possible, but yeah, most likely it's not that easy. This is exactly we are, we are thinking about how to do it. There are ways, and especially for, for all the uh, Docker universe, a lot of things are uh, changing right now. Or maybe, maybe not maybe, to, yeah. to Docker. Hmm? Uh, Vladimir, Anna? you're muted. No, Vladimir is continuing talking, but he's muted. Ah, sorry for that. Uh, so, uh, 
please Anna go and I will ask later. Okay, now I just wanted to, to add here something that it's not necessarily in our objectives to allow any kind of code to be run here because we would like to keep to this benchmarking idea so that we are thinking about allowing in some way or another people to submit a new forwarding protocol or a new application layer, but we are not thinking about general new code um, or free free simulation scenarios and things like that. Like the idea, the main idea here is really to be able to compare opportunistic data dissemination protocols in well-defined benchmark scenarios so that people can really say, I have run my protocol and the other 12 are already available the results. So I don't have to rerun those. The biggest problem, and I think most of the developers here know our problems now for years, that some of our simulations are running for up to 24 hours. We have even some cases when they run for three weeks. So you're not interested in rerunning all of that just for the sake of, you know, like um, having it all together in your paper. So this is, this is the real problem here, which we're hunting. The, for example, the taxi scenario currently in the queue is running the, uh, since 24 hours right now and it's finished for approximately 50%. Um, this means that there we are thinking about how to uh, restrict or to uh, tell this simulation will take forever and this is a non-brainer and will finish within a couple of seconds. This is, this is also one of the problems we have currently with this system, yes, that we are trying to put some reasonable security measures so that nobody can blast the servers. On the other side, we know that some simulations are actually almost blasting the servers. Uh, so it's a trade-off uh, of knowing or not knowing it. And then how to deal with the server to kill the simulation on time just before the complete uh, server is frozen. So. If you have hints or ideas, uh, especially from the core developer team, we are more than happy for uh, ideas. Uh, maybe I will just repeat my remark before uh, handing over uh, to the core team is to think about different containerization technology than the Docker, such as the Podman, which is, of course, not running uh, with the root privileges. And I believe it has far more options how to limit resources so you can uh, programmatically limit the container resources once it will exceed some type of the quota it will be automatically discarded and what can is the you, name and you flexibly uh sorry the name you're muted again vladimir vladimir you were muted yes i will send a link uh, to the podman in the chat Okay, but can you flexibly set the quotas because we would like really to implement later on also kind of a prediction algorithm which given the ini file will predict how long we expect the simulation to run so that we can set the quota also accordingly. Uh, this combines with the Kubernetes, uh, you can create a recipe for that container that will include, mm -hmm. let's say the resource limitation. Okay. Sounds good, thank you. Um, co correct me if I'm wrong, but this Portman and Kubernetes are all managing technologies for Docker containers, right? Or is it completely uh, the different? Portman, uh, Portman is like drop-in replacement uh, for the Docker. So if you have already a Docker image built uh, using the Docker file, you can use the Portman directly without actually, yeah, just replacing the binary of the Docker. Okay, we will have a look. Thank you. Uh, just an idea from the sales guys. Like, since you have this whole uh, image self contained, the simulation is running in itself. You can freeze the state anytime you like, right? So, you could save the state of the simulation at any time. So, you could implement a quota that says, you know, all simulations have, you know, X hours per day. And if you're finished, good for you. If you're not finished, then you haven't blocked the server. You can come back tomorrow. That's an interesting idea. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a nice an idea. Yeah. Thank um, you. Just another uh, an interesting point to add on the sort of quota thing. Uh, from my experience with university supercomputers, the way that they do it at my university is you ask for a certain amount of execution time on a certain number of cores. 
And the smaller the amount of time you've asked for, the more likely your item is to get processed. And the more time you've asked for, the less likely it is to get processed. And so it wait, works its way up the queue. And if you're uh, if you reach the end of the time you've asked for, it just uh, kicks you out of that process and saves the state. Now, the problem is you can't say for sure at the beginning uh, how long it's going to take. That's the problem. Yes, but you, yeah. you can ask for a bit more. Um, they, if you sort of think it might take 24 hours, you mm -hmm. ask for 28. Mm -hmm. um, and then it will still complete in 24. But compared to somebody that asks for six hours is probably going to get their job done first. Yeah. interesting approach um and just thinking about if this is possible with the benchmarks um but it, neither we put it on our to do to uh, think about this scheduling mechanism or at least selling you have that many hours per day and if it's uh, if the time is over we freeze the machine till the next day yeah anyhow we can accommodate several simulations uh and this is also kind of optimization problem which we have like to decide which simulations to start at which time um kind of currently we don't have any like it's first come first uh, first serve but we're thinking also about some sort of a greedy algorithm at least uh, similar to what edward was actually uh proposing right now and this prediction algorithm which i was uh, talking about will be exactly to be able to at least predict those 24 hours in a coarse way. And then, of course, you put a little bit of slack time on top of that. That's uh, that's our next next steps here. And uh, one other question from me, um, the about the benchmarking nature of this. Uh, like, What is the like? targeted uh, accuracy of, of the benchmark number. So uh, this is supposed to measure like runtime, I believe, of the simulation. And is it just in the uh, range of like, is it half an hour or is it two hour or is it like five days kind of accuracy? Or, or uh, are you also looking into like spotting a difference of a few percent uh, in, in runtime? Um, I have the impression you misunderstood maybe what we're measuring with the benchmarks. Maybe, uh, the yes. benchmark, yeah, the benchmarks are not designed to measure the, uh, the the processing time of the simulation. They're designed actually to measure the performance of the data dissemination protocol okay, implemented okay. in the simulation. Okay, maybe so all okay. Yeah. So Sorry. so the simulation time and RAM which was taken and so on, which you saw in the in in the end of that uh, demo. This is uh, this is actually just for us to know what how was it doing, and to use actually to save in a special database for that prediction algorithm, okay, <laughs> so we I can see. learn actually from that. But otherwise, we are in fact with the benchmarks we are measuring things like delivery ratio, uh, delivery delay, uh, cache uh, pressure, things like that, like normal networking metrics. Okay, that, that was not clear for me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. But maybe all of this, like, runtime talk and, and the memory statistics confuse me, sorry. Yeah. And the benchmarks, just maybe just out of interest, are pretty much hand-tailored um, simulation scenarios, which are all based on tr mobility traces, on GPS traces, and sometimes also on data traces. Like, let's say, a big scenario, like something like San Francisco is, for example, a known scenario already. Uh, and sometimes we have also Twitter data traces, and we really hand-tailored the traffic and with some special events differences, changes in the traffic patterns, um, mobility, number of nodes, the role of the node. So everything pretty much from data dissemination down to the physical layer is hand tailored so that you can only change actually the data dissemination uh, on top of it. And the application layer is also fixed. Uh, so this is the general idea. So the idea is if you have a protocol and run it, for example, on the San Francisco taxi uh, traces, that you say, okay, what happens if I use now uh, Kichi instead of Epidemic? Or what happens if I change the, the cache size? 
uh, how does the performance of, a, uh, of the dissemination protocol change and makes this comparable to get a deeper understanding of what's going on um, in this, uh, especially the opportunistic uh, data dissemination protocols. I also want to add something that is uh, so you know in in so the 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 reason why we all I mean the, so we are going a little to to the top so in in I mean most of you know all the people most of the people who are here know like we have a big problem in our sort of uh, uh, pro, uh, profession or uh, you know academic area uh, of of. Uh, repeatability, reproducibility, and replicability of, of experiments. So this is like a very uh, a big issue right now because I do an experiment and then I just uh, have some information which cannot be repeated or reproduced by other people. So this is like the, 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 the overarching objective of our work where we have a, a mechanism where uh, specifically in this case, opportunistic networks, experiments, uh, evaluations can be repeated, reproduced and, and, and you know, redone. So they could, they're comparable. So this was like the, the, uh, like the guiding uh, thing that we did. And then we identified, as Anna said, the, the benchmarks uh, to, to, so this, these benchmarks are like uh, common. So you, you could have your own uh, uh, forwarding protocol. I mean, that's what we are going at, but at the moment we have a set of pro, uh, forwarding protocols. So these are uh, uh, already there. So you could uh, 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 change parameters and, and rerun in, in different ways and figure, uh, try to compare. So this, this comparability is, is what we are going at. So, this is like one of the things that is there and, and already ACM has uh, started uh, uh, looking at solutions for this. Like for example, they have this uh, uh, review and badging initiative, uh, which, which gives you know, badges or, or sort of acknowledge, acknowledge people who redo the experiments what others have done and with the confirm uh, uh, the results. So, so, so these are some of the things that are being done because uh, this is one of the big, pro, uh, big uh, one of the problems that we have in, in uh, you know, academic research uh, or any kind of research where things, when somebody publishes something that cannot be repeated. So you can claim a lot of things, but if, if it cannot be done, uh, uh, then there is a problem. So this is uh, uh, a solution also for that, that uh, in that context. Oh, are there any more questions? Awkward silence. That probably means that there are no other questions at all. So thank you very much for attending this session. It was my utmost pleasure to host it. And I wish you all the best in the remaining evening and looking forward to see you around tomorrow. Thanks a lot for being here. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you all.